I'm in a dark room and Satan comes in and shines a flashlight. I've been standing in the dark all along. Um, and God basically brought me to the sun. Here's the real light. Um, here's the eternal light and the light of my love and the flow of my eternal living water that you will not be empty from ever again if you surrender to me. I have such mixed emotions about filming this video. And I literally just said a prayer that God can talk through me, can work through me. And for me to be an instrument here for his work. So if you have been following me for a while or from the beginning, you know that I preached a lot about yoga and my yoga practice and how much it had benefited me and how much um, I was, how devoted I was to this practice daily. And I, I really talked so much about new age meditation and yoga. And so I know that this is probably a surprise coming from me who advocated so much about the yogic lifestyle. And so I want to touch on the fact that the enemy goes after people who are not always far from Jesus. I think sometimes we think that because we go to mass every Sunday, because we are raising our children in the faith, because we listen to worship music, because we pray daily, that we are safe from the enemy's attacks. And I am proof right here that that is not the case. Oftentimes he goes after us more because we smell like Jesus, because we have that scent of Jesus on us, that he doesn't want that. He wants to pull us away from him. And that is what happened with me. And I followed Jesus my whole life. That's how I was raised and that is how I married my husband. That is how I've raised my four children. And um, it, God was always in my life and he, he, he was always there. He was always a part of my life. But one thing that I had never surrendered to him was my anxiety. And that is where the enemy got me. Okay. I just switched areas to film in. Sorry if this is confusing. He doesn't want me to film this video. He does not. And I am going to film this video. Is with yoga, a lot of these stories that I've read up on. My light just went out. My ring light that I'm using here to film. The enemy does not want me to film this video. I'm telling you, my ring light's just not working. It's plugged in. It's not working and it has never done this before. So I think what I was talking about is the common thought is that we're following God and we're doing everything we need to do. Um, you know, we're kind of in the safe zone. And one of my favorite quotes is that Satan capitalizes on trauma. So if there's anything that you're going through, anything that traumatic past or anything that you're recovering from or anything that you struggle with, he's going to focus on that. He's going to go after the distracted, the troubled, to try to bring them healing. And I emphasis on the word try because he will try to do it. It won't be the healing that Jesus will bring. It won't bring, it won't be the healing that our savior can give us. So let's talk about kind of how I found yoga and my story with that. So I practiced yoga daily for six years and um, I found it back when I was pregnant with my son. And I started doing yoga because I needed to find a gentler um, workout that I could do with a, um, with a little bit of bleeding that I had on my placenta. And so I kind of turned from doing uh, workouts in the gym to doing um, a, a gentler practice on a yoga mat at my house. And so at first it, it really was just a workout to me, but it quickly became a more spiritual practice. Another favorite quote of mine is, yoga is not a physical practice with spiritual benefits. It is a spiritual practice with physical benefits. And there's a lot to this that I'm going to kind of unwrap and dig into. 
Um, of course, I'm not going to dig into it fully. I'm going to leave some references down below in the description box. If you are going through this, trying to figure out if it's right for you and trying to see if this is a practice that you should have in your life, especially as a Christian. Um, I'm going to leave some references down below that helped me as well. So if you look at the word yoga and what it really means and what it stands for is to yoke or to unite. So there's nothing technically biblically against yoga. You don't see in the Bible, thou shall not do yoga. But if you dig into the root of yoga, you dig into um, what it stems from and how it was created, you will quickly find that it is very against God. So basically what this means is to yoke with a spirit the yoga spirit, the spiritual side of yoga. Now, this is not to yoke with God and to unite with God. This is a completely different situation. So I'm going to pull up a page from the government of India, just kind of giving you information about yoga. And so I'm gonna put it on the screen as well for you guys to see. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root. It means to join or to yoke or to unite. As per yogic scriptures, the practice of yoga leads to the union of individual consciousness with that of the universal consciousness, indicating a perfect harmony between the mind and body, man and nature. So it says the practice of yoga is believed to have started with the very dawn of civilization. The science of yoga has its origins to thousands of years ago, long before the first religions or belief systems were born. In the yogic lore, Shiva is seen as the first yogi and the first guru. And so that is a false god of Shiva. Um, and so basically, if we want to tie yoga back to its roots, we're talking about yoga being tied to the god Shiva, which as Christians, we know is a false god. So basically, when I look at the definition of yoga, yoga is oftentimes referred to as this light and love practice this way to obtain inner peace and inner alignment and inner enlightenment and all of these good things it is perceived to be in this culture and it has now left india and it's still going on in india of course but now it's come to the western world as just this inner peace practice that you can incorporate into your saturday morning to help your week flow better and to enjoy with your friends and the thing is is that there is a much deeper root here that we need to uncover if we are going to incorporate this into our life and um so anyway it is seen as light and love and that is a common thing that yoga teachers and yogis will say is love and light peace and love love and light and that is why we are so deceived and why i was so deceived is it says in the very bible that so I have my Bible here because this has been a godsend to me during this time of spiritual battle and really uncovering what the truth is in my walk with God. And so I'm not going to be deceived by the Bible. The Bible will tell me how it is. And I have been convicted left and right during this time. You want to go to 2 Corinthians 11 14 no wonder for even satan disguises himself as an angel of light so um that kind of wraps it up that anything that is perceived as love and light and it's not with god in the center of the practice then you have to question it and i had to question it sorry there's an airplane going over is this of god and I quickly realized that I was being deceived by Satan. And Satan had given me this false light of, this is light, this is love, this is going to heal your anxiety. This is what you need to find inner peace. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't find that peace, but it wasn't true peace. It was a false peace that he was giving me and it, it wasn't from God and it wasn't the peace that I feel from God. That's for sure. It, it was so opposite of him and I was so blinded. And any stories that I hear talking about people coming out of new age movement and new age practices talk exactly how I'm talking, that they were deceived. They saw light, they saw love, they saw healing, they saw passion and compassion and enlightenment and alignment and balance 
why is it bad? And then God lifts the blinders and says, you were standing in darkness the whole time. And I have this analogy that I came up with months ago when I came out of this. This has been about six months in my journey of coming out of yoga and leaving new age practices and meditation. And what I quickly realized was this really cool analogy that I'm gonna share with you. So I call this the flashlight analogy. And how I'm gonna explain this is picture me standing in a dark room. I'm anxious, I'm scared, I'm worrying all the time. I'm in a dark room and Satan comes in and shines a flashlight on the room and I now can see light. Even though I'm still standing in a dark room, I can now see light and I can see around me. And I'm given this idea of I'm finding healing, I'm finding peace. This is great. This is a beautiful practice. I'm going to stay in this room, even though I am blinded by the fact that I'm still standing in a dark room. Well, fast forward to when God opened my eyes and woke me up to the truth. God comes in and takes the flashlight away and says, you're still standing in a dark room, Katie. You're not standing in a lit up room. The minute this flashlight goes away, this false sense of light, you are still in darkness and you haven't been healed. And that analogy just kind of like, whoa, <laughs> woke me up and was like, I've been standing in the dark all along. Um, and God basically brought me to the sun <laughs> and was like, this is the real light. You thought you had light with a flashlight with double A batteries. Here's the real light. Um, here's the eternal light and the light of my love and the flow of my eternal living water that you will not be empty from ever again. If you surrender to me, you surrender every worry, every fear, every anxiety, every anxious thought, anything that consumes you that you think yoga could heal you from, give it to me and I will show you what healing is. I don't wanna cry in this video. I really don't, um, but I'm going to get emotional because this has been such a journey for me. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I don't wanna talk about it. I've talked my husband's ear off. I've talked my mom's ear off. But the thing is, is that we can be so easily deceived by him. We are so weak in our flesh. And that is the thing that has been so humbling to me. In this spiritual journey with God is that he has, I'm shaking. He has reminded me that we are so weak and that we cannot do anything without him. And we can become so far from him so quickly if we let our guard down to the world. And it's not him who leaves us, it's us that leave him. So I got sidetracked. Let's go back to the root of yoga. It is from a pagan root. The practices in asanas lead to worship of Hindu gods. And in turns, this turns into idolatry, which I found in my life. This quickly became an idol for me. And for instance, let's say like the warrior poses. We all know warrior one, two, and three of yoga, very basic asanas in yoga. These are based off of a fierce warrior, a Hindu warrior. I don't know how to pronounce this name. I believe it's Veera Bhadra. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it says it's a Hindu warrior and it is technically a incarnation of the God Shiva. It is described to have a thousand arms and a body as dark as storm clouds. And so this is something I want to touch on. I basically just gave you, this is just some of the moves and asanas of yoga. This isn't all of the asanas that you will do in a yoga practice. An argument that is often given with yoga and specifically Christians and yoga is, well, it's not your intention to worship these false gods. It's not, that's not your intention to get on your mat and do these things. So there's nothing wrong with it. You're just stretching. This is the most common argument that I hear when it comes to this. And the thing is, is Satan doesn't care what your intention is. He cares if you're doing what he wants you to do or not. He doesn't care if, oh, your intention is to worship God, but you're going to do this Hindu 
false god practice. He cares what you're doing. And I'll just go back to this famous quote of the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It doesn't matter what your intention is. There's a lady named Angela and she was a former yoga teacher who left yoga to follow Jesus. And she has a whole movement based off of leaving the new age industry and new age movement and committing herself to Christ. And so I'm going to quote one of her quotes here. Um, it, it goes something like, when the vine is pagan, then the fruit cannot be holy. When the vine is Hindu, then the fruit is yoga. When the vine is yoga, then the fruit is idolatry. These practices are not of God. So it doesn't matter what your intention is. These poses, like I talked about with the warrior poses, these poses are meant to honor false gods and false worship. It doesn't matter if you're getting on your mat and listening to Christian music, which is what I said was okay to do at one point. That doesn't matter. I'm still doing these moves and I'm, and I'm giving myself to this practice that is not of God. And if you want to go deeper into the spiritual side of it and finding healing and peace and inner alignment, then you're giving this false God worship practice the power of healing you. Also, another topic that I want to touch on is the fact that yoga becomes a reliance on the self and on no one else. And if you look into the practice of yoga and really what it embodies, it's all about connection to your breath and being able to find inner peace and really getting to a point that you don't really need anyone else. It's a very selfish practice and it gets to the point that it's addictive because you feel so good. Again, this false sense of good that's coming from the enemy, but you start to feel so good and so like aligned that like you literally can't get through your day without your practice. And there were so many days where I would not do yoga. I would skip a practice and I would be like, I didn't do yoga today. I, that's why I'm having a bad day. I couldn't function without my practice. And it became this like connection to it that was so unhealthy and that I needed it to be peaceful and to function well. I would have lots of anxiety when I would skip a practice or when I would fail to do a long enough practice. Um, it quickly became a bondage to me in a worldly bondage of being tied down to this practice to heal me and to give me a false sense of peace. Um, and I, I felt like I needed to preach about it. Um, and that's the scary thing is without realizing it, I was trying to rope other people into it. And that was the enemy working through me, of course, which is kind of sad to think about that. I wanted, I wanted to bring other people to the practice and, um, I'm thankful to say that my wonderful, beautiful husband never tried it and God had a hand on him, that's for sure. I wanna bring you to a verse that kind of woke me up in the beginning of this change and that is Matthew 6, 24. And it is no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And what I realized at this point in my journey was that I was serving two masters. I was absolutely serving two masters. I was serving God and going to mass weekly and raising my children in the faith and listening to Christian music and all those things that I talked about in the beginning. But I was also serving this other part of my life, this yogic part of my life. We will not have a on fire relationship with God, with Christ, if we are not giving all of ourselves, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the sad, and the happy. And every part of us that comes into our human existence, if we are not laying it at his feet and surrendering it to him and saying, you are my master, you are my God, you are the one living true God, then you will part from him and you will be easily deceived. And that's what happened to me is I was easily deceived. And as a human, I will be deceived again. The enemy runs the earth. He's here and he is prowling 
and growling and trying to devour another soul. And he's on attack for it. And if we are not guarded up and we are not armored up with his name, with God's righteous name, then he will attack us. And we are so weak and we are so easily devoured. And that is what has been so humbling about this experience to me. And how scary it was to come to terms with the fact that Satan had completely deceived me and my whole way of thinking for six years daily. And it became such an idol for me and it became my identity. And, you know, I would be lying if I said this journey of leaving it had been easy because it was far from that. Now I'm in such a good place right now. But at the beginning, this all started about six months ago that I left. Um, it was really hard at first. I truly had no idea how to deal with my anxiety daily. I had no idea how to find inner peace and how to be this peaceful person that I had talked about. I, I really struggled with this for a little bit until I realized that, that, okay, I haven't surrendered this to God. I haven't fully given him me, given him my wounds, the things I need healing from. And when I did that, he gave me the biggest hug ever and said, welcome home. And so I'm happy to tell you that I am still on this journey of really clinging to him and awakening my faith in a way that I have never been awakened before. And really just soaking up any word that he can give me, any truth that I can hide in my heart and I can teach my children to be on guard for the enemy and to put on the true armor of God. I wanna also talk about 1 Timothy 4. It says, now the spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. In this so very obviously shows that as we get further and further into life, the enemy is gonna prowl even more. And, and so there is a YouTuber on here that I really enjoy her content and it is Milena Sisiati. And I'm sure some of you guys have seen her, um, but something else that really, really spoke to me was when she spoke of the fact that we are creatures created to worship. God created us to worship him, to know, love and serve him more in this world and to find eternity with him in heaven. That is how God created us. He created our very soul to worship him. And what I realized when she said this was, if we don't have God as the first thing in our life that we are worshiping, then we will quickly find something else to worship. And that could be yoga, it could be our phone, it could be shopping, physical things, material things, um, social media, it could, it could be a relationship, food, anything that has become an idol for us, a sense of worship that is in our nature and in our creature to do. We, we were created to do this. And if we don't have God first, we will find something else to worship. And that just basically like, whoo, my eyes just like, and God woke me up and was like, girl, worship me, I should be the top priority in your life, and I'm not. One of my favorite Bible verses, and it is the Bible verse that is across my YouTube page when you go to my channel, and it is Romans 12, 2, and it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And that is, my goal in everything is to not be connected to the world, to not find these practices and worldly things that connect us to other things that are not God and that are not of God, that will pull us away from him. So I'm turning to Ephesians 5, 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for it is because of these things that the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. 
for once you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret, but when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it is said, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. And that is the honest truth right there, is that God is light. Christ is the living light. That is the light that we need. And, you know, any light that I spoke of in the past that came from yoga was a complete lie. And I apologize for anyone who watched my past videos and um, even tried yoga. Um, I'm sorry that I was led to deceive you in that way. Um, I've gone through my past videos and tried to delete anything that spoke of yoga, but of course there might be one here and there that I don't remember speaking of it in. But that is why I wanted to make this video is I needed a video just showing the whole story behind stopping my yoga practice and completely changing my whole path of life. So I know this video was a lot deeper than a lot of my other videos. And I know I spoke on a lot of different topics today um, and really opened myself up and was fully vulnerable here. I have felt called to speak of this since I found the truth, but I needed to give it some time to soak in and to really pray about it and be guided in the timing that God wants. Maybe I won't post this video yet, but either way I filmed it and I hope that it uncovers some questions for you if you are on this journey as well of trying to find the truth behind this practice and this very deceitful practice that so many of us are involved in. And I pray for whoever is watching this video for you to find complete peace in the arms of our Heavenly Father who is waiting for us and that you can put this armor on to withstand these flaming arrows that the enemy is throwing at us day and night. Even though I had so many distractions to film this video from the refrigerator making noise to the AC making noise to airplanes every two minutes flying over me to my ring light breaking in the middle of filming, I filmed this video. The lighting might be kind of wonky, the audio might kind of go out. I think my microphone died too, which is crazy. I'm so sorry, but I filmed the video and I hope it brings all glory to him. Thank you for joining me today. And I will see you in my next video. Until next time, take care guys. Have a beautiful week. Bye.